right, guys, I just got done doing um, a brook trout video, my biggest brook trout ever. I want to elaborate on some of the things I touched on, and I want to talk about handling, conservation, poaching, and just kind of go over this. And I'm going to try to keep it short because I could go hours on about this. Um, I have fly fished for over 20 years. Um, I'm pretty much, my brother taught me some basics. And then I taught myself the rest. I didn't get taught in hand. I didn't get taught a lot about handling fish. I didn't get taught about conservation. I had to learn this the hard way, and that's being scolded by older fly fishermen and people on the internet about how I handled fish. Um, in fact, there are some things I didn't even think about until this year. I mean, it's just there are so many things that you could, and there's so many things that you could do to make the fish live better, and. I appreciate it when people tell me, but there's a way you tell somebody. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is how you discuss handling and conservation with other fishermen, especially fly fishermen. Fly fishermen have a bit of an ego. They think that they're God's gift to the world, and I say they, and it's about half and half. If you're a fly fisherman, you are either one of two people. You're either an elitist or you're just someone that loves fly fishing, okay? I've fish with both. I have talked with both and I can tell you honestly the elitist is it, it makes my butt itch. Like it I I love fly fishing but these people make me not want to love fly fishing so I ain't got to spend time around them, okay? So, the big issue that you have a lot of times with um, with people is the type of net, the way you hold fish, how you hold fish, and um, how long you keep them out of the water. Okay, those are three big ones. Okay, so first, the type of net. Do not use a rope net. That's a rope net. Don't use a rope net with trout. If you are catching and releasing and you hook and you net the fish, you can see the lines from the rope that's cut into them. And what that's done is it's cut through the slime and left a mark. Those these marks can get infected. They could cause other injuries. They could, um, th there's a lot of things that, that could happen. Okay. And I'm going to leave a disclaimer before I start talking about all this stuff because I know I'm going to have someone in there like, you don't know. I don't know if these fish are going to die. But we want to give them the best chance of living. Um, so we want to do certain things to ensure that they live long, happy lives. So these are things that I have learned and been taught by people that I respect as fly fishermen. Okay, These things I've been taught by guides and people that, have, that I fish with that I respect their opinion they're not buttholes. They're not arrogant, you know, elitists. They are just good guys who are trying to save, you know, try to help preserve wild and native trout populations. Okay? So, no rope net. Use a rubber net. Okay? Uh, where is it? This is a rubber net. This is one of the nets I use for when I go fly fishing for really small fish. This is what I would consider to be safe for fish. Remember, catch and release. This is what we're talking If you're catching and keeping, I don't care what net you use. You could grab that fish and throw it on the ground and kill it for all I care because you're keeping it. But if you're catching and releasing so that fish doesn't suffer or get anything wrong with it, make sure that you are doing, you know, that you're doing what you can to make sure it's healthy. All right. Second thing, when you hold a fish, okay, do not stick your hands up in their gills. Now, I say that when I say gills, I mean those red things in there. If you touch that with your hands, it's like me sticking my hand down in your lungs and grabbing your lungs. It's just good practice, okay? Now, again, does this mean they'll die? Definitely, no. But we want to give them the best chance to live, okay? Make sure you wet your hands, okay? And when you take a picture... Just doesn't even be out of the water more than six or seven seconds at a time, okay? And don't keep dunking them in and out, in and out, in and out. Let's not do that. 
one time, maybe two. Okay, and then you let them go off. A good trick if you don't have a fancy camera is to take your iPhone, if you have an iPhone or some kind of Android, put it up, put a video on it while the fish is still in the water, and take the fish out and hold it up to the video for a few seconds. Make sure that you get it right, and you put it back in the water and go. Well, a good rule of thumb is hold your breath while you're holding the fish, okay? Now, however you feel about holding your breath, that fish just did the equivalent of running a marathon fighting you, so it's three or four times harder for it to hold its breath. So let's be mindful of it, okay? We're trying not to hurt or damage anything, okay? All right. Again, do I know they're going to die? No, but the best practice is to do what we can to ensure that they have a long life. Do what we can to get them back there as fast and as safely as possible. So, um, um, the next thing I want to talk about, because the three things I, the three things were how long to hold a fish out, how to hold a fish, and um, netting. Okay. Also, with holding the fish, try not to squeeze right behind the. Try not to, because I, I just I realized this just not too long ago. Um, someone pointed out to me. Um, that this is where a lot of the vital organs are for fish. You try to hold it a little bit, or not, don't hold it too tight, because I have a tendency to hold it like this, because I got short, stubby fingers. So I'm trying to hold it so you can see the fish. If you're going to do that, do it more close to the middle instead of right up to it. Again, these are things that might not necessarily kill the fish, but let's we're trying to get the best chance to return, okay? And that's the last time I'm going to say that. I'm just, people get real combative about this sometimes, and I'm trying to avoid all the conflict in the world, okay? Guys, um, also, another thing, gloves. And I see some well-respected people using these gloves. I see people that are professionals. I see people that are fly guides. They use these gloves. I, I don't know enough to them to say that they're going to hurt the fish, but the idea of wearing a glove and handling a fish, whether it be rubber, wool, whatever it is, I, I just can't. So wet your hands. Your hands are going to get cold. Okay? Now, that being said... Now we're going to talk about something that a lot of fly fish, trout fish, fishermen in general um, despise and we get very upset about because one bad apple rule spoils the whole bunch. Um, poaching. We all have the spot that we all that was really good and then all of a sudden you get there and you see a guy with 12 trout on a stringer getting into a, uh, putting into a cooler and looking at you like, don't you dare, you know, what you're going to tell on me. And and yeah, you should call, Don't don't try to confront these people because um, you don't know. People are crazy. People are crazy. Don't make yourself known. Just as best as you can, try to get information about them, and when they leave, call the game warden. Be like, hey, this person, this vehicle, such and such. Um, I'm not I'm not going to spend my tax dollars on something like Preservation of River and then have someone come through and just, just break the rules because they're being selfish. You don't know what they're... No, no, no. They're being selfish. Okay? All right? It ain't just their river, it's everybody's river. Everyone's paying tax money, everyone's trying to get this. You don't go in to maybe a delayed harvest, maybe to a fly fishing only, maybe to a catch and release section and just start keeping everything you catch. No, there's put and take streams for that. Do not get a big treble hook and start hooking them. If you get caught doing stuff like that, you, I actually, I don't know. I, I have never seen anyone get caught. If you know, put it in the, put it in the, uh, Comments, what happens if you get caught poaching, okay? Whether it be limited fish, um, using the wrong type of bait, or just trying to snag them, okay? I've seen my fair share of people just with big treble hooks just snagging fish. Um, they they usually, people call on them usually before I even get a chance. If you go to a river and it says catch, it says delayed uh, harvest, catch and release, fly fishing only, single hook, artificial hook only, whatever it may be, and you can't keep the fish, or you can't use treble hooks, or you can't use live bait, don't. Go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. The reason the fish are in there is because people are catching and releasing. The reason the fish are in there is because people are using more difficult tactics than just dragging a freaking treble hook through and snagging a fish. These are not spot that you have catch and release spots. If you want to catch trout and eat trout, go to catch and release spots Talk to one of the older gentlemen that are there. 
because the old guys at trout spots know what they're eating and they know what to do. The old guys at rivers fishing for trout, whether it be conventional or fly fishing, even though you may not think it, know a lot more than you. So, or know a lot more about a particular thing than you do. So, it's always good to talk to fly fishermen if they are social. Side note, if you go up to a fly fisherman and you go, hey man, how's it going? And he just looks at you and does this, leave him alone. They're not there to necessarily catch fish. They're there to get away from whatever it is is back at home. So they're wanting quiet. Leave them alone, okay? So, poaching is something that you should report. Do not confront the individual. And just let the, let, let the game service take care of it, okay? They could do a much better job than you can, all right? So, now we're going to go one more thing, and then I'm going to talk about wild, native, and stocked fish. Okay, okay. I'm going to talk about one more thing, and this one more thing is etiquette, okay? When you are trout fishing or fly fishing a stream that is not a stalker stream, even a stalker stream you should think about it, but if it's like the first day and everyone's there side to side, you pick that. You That's your fault. You, you picked the wrong day or the wrong river. But if you go to a stream and there's miles and miles and miles and miles, I say that, but there's probably about, where I live, about two or three miles of trout river or good trout or whatever, okay? And you decide to just pull up right next to someone at a hole that's been there before you and start fishing, you need to get punched in the mouth. Like, dude, you, you don't punch people in the mouth, but you are a butthole. You need to, you, you need your mama to come and get you. Um, give people the benefit of maybe a hole or two away from them. Okay? If the next hole is 100, 150 yards, go away. If they are the only one fishing for miles of stream, get away from them. Okay? If there are a bunch of people, I, there's a stream that I like to fish. I have it on video. And I go there and there are five or six fly fishermen there. And I have to be, hey, where are you going? Which way are you heading? You heading that way? Okay, I'm going to head this way. Hey, which hole are you going to next? That one? Okay, I'm going to go two holes up so I don't high hole you and you have another one. And by the time you get to where I am, the fish have calmed down a little bit, okay? Okay. Don't high hold. Don't go right above somebody, okay? And don't fish right on top of them. Be courteous. Be kind. You never know what you're going to get. I've gotten free flies from being nice. I've gotten um, people saying, hey, man, you can fish here. I'm done, okay? And I've caught fish for being nice. Um, and uh, I've gotten friends, like friends that I fish with, from just being a courteous guy. So don't, don't be a... But don't do it right up on people. Don't try to just cut them off. That isn't your stream. It's everybody's stream. Share it. So. I haven't pulled up on here because I can't remember all of them. And I'm going to have to read them off. Because I, I know some of them. Um, but. Okay. The first one. A lot of people are going to go. What? This one is. It didn't even surprise me the first time I read it. Rainbow trout are native to the United States. Um. But they're native in the northern northern Pacific, northern Pacific area. Okay, um, that's where they're native. A way up like Washington, Oregon area up that way. Okay, they are native. The what we have down here are variants of you can have just you, different different species of rainbow trout. But you do have a native strain up there. Okay. Second. Cutthroat. Cutthroats are actually native um, to uh, native to um, the Midwest, and you know you have other places like um, northeast. I mean northwest that have native cutthroat. Cutthroat that go all the way into. They're everywhere up that way. Okay. Once you get into like Montana, Wyoming, west, and then you have some. I think you have some all the way down into Arizona. I'm not correct me. I, I'm correct me if I'm wrong. Cutthroat are native. You have tons of different species. Um, I'm not, I, I can't think of all the species. Um, in fact, I'm having a hard time thinking of one right now. But cutthroat are native to United States. Okay. The golden trout. All right. Here's here's something. Um, if you are fishing in West Virginia or somewhere right around it, those big yellow bananas. 
are not golden trout. They're mutated rainbow trout, okay? They are basically just the, the rainbow trout that have been tie-dyed. That's what they are. The original golden trout is only is native and only lives right now in the Sierra Nevadas, and they don't get very big. Here's a picture of a golden trout. This is a golden trout. Lake trout. Lake trout are, um, are native to the Great Lakes, to waters around that area. There are lake trout all through up the northern, uh, the northern areas in, you know, in the United States, Midwest. Uh, mostly it's the northern part. Like, I'm pretty sure it's lake trout from, like, I think it's, like, upper New York. All through there, like, going through the Great Lakes. Like, there's lake trout anywhere. I'm pre Again, not very familiar with lake trout. It's a species I haven't targeted much. I don't think I've targeted at all. So if you have some information, put it down in the comment. I'm, I love to learn, so. All right, so brook trout are native in the Appalachians. Those are native trout. When you go out west, those have been introduced. Those are wild fish, okay? They are native to the Appalachians. They're wild out west, okay? It's like the rainbow trout are native in the uh, northwest, wild here. Okay, if they're not stuck, if they're introduced and reproduced, wild, stop. Okay, so, and we'll get to that later. All right, so the next fish um, that we have is uh, the next species is a fish I have I know very little about. I'm just going to name it. If you have more info about it, put it down there. Uh, Dolly Varden. Um, I've never targeted them. They're a fish form. Haven't heard much from them. Um, if you have information you want to put it down there, go for it. Again, I love to learn, so. Now this one, I, I has, is a little, is like a bucket list fish for me. And I'm, I'm willing to do the hiking and I'm willing to do the traveling. Uh, bull trout. Bull trout, um, have had a hard time of it. Um, and I think they're starting to make a comeback. I'm not real sure. Um, but I would love to to fish for bull trout. Bull trout are hyper, are, are really aggressive. They eat real big streamers and um, they, the cutthroat in their vicinity usually get eaten. So, and, and they're not small. I, I would like to catch a good 20 plus inch bull trout on a fly rod. That would be a dream. So, and again, I'm willing to do the, you know, hiking and traveling and stuff. I, let's go. So, all right. Next fish. This is something I don't know. Um, there, there's, there's two. Um, the Gila trout is um, native to the Gila River tributaries in Arizona and New Mexico. I don't know anything else on them. If you know more, let me know. I like to learn. Leave a comment. Um, and then Apache trout. And these look like small, compact little brown fish, little brown trout. Um, they are native to the Upper Salt River and the Upper Little Colorado River, and uh, in Arizona. Those fish, and we've seen pictures of them. Okay, are the only native, native. This is where they originated from. Native species in the states. Okay. They, that means that they were here before we introduced them. We didn't introduce, if you, if man had to be involved for them fish to exist in a body of water, they are not native. They are wild. Okay. Wild fish are fish that can reproduce or that do reproduce in uh, the water they've been introduced to. Okay. So let's say you have a stretch of water and you put a whole bunch of rainbow trout fingerlings. Okay. In, in the water, okay, and then they start making babies and they start reproducing, okay. Those are wild fish, all right. Wild fish are def by definition is a fish that has been born in and raised in that stream. I would say that if a fish has spent its first two or three months being raised and introduced, it's pretty wild. Is it by definition wild? No. They fight as hard. Um, they um, are difficult to catch at times, depending on how pressured it is. 
and uh, they don't look like they've been bashing their head against concrete. Well, so they're pretty, they fight as hard, they're just as smart. And the only reason that they're not called wild is because the first two or three months. So I would say that I would call them wildish, um, but they're not wild completely. So, and then you have stalkers. This is a stalker. This fish has looked like it slammed his head against a concrete block. All of his tail, all of his fins and everything are marked off. And uh, it, it's basically for catch and release. If you have stocked fish, unless it's a trophy section or it's a section of river that's delayed harvest, most of the time when you catch this fish, you keep it, okay? So um, that is a stocked fish. So I hope this video was informational. Please leave a comment of any of the questions that I had. Again, I don't know everything. There's tons to learn. Um, I know enough not to sound like an idiot. Um, if I do sound like an idiot, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, uh, if you want to leave a comment, leave a comment. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you want to watch more, please subscribe. And as always, guys, tight lines of blessings.